Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to segment a mesh based on its thickness. So unlike the decomposition node or the Voronoi fracturing, this would be a bit more plausible. You see that thin parts are broken off from the main body and you can define the number of clusters here in the setup. And before we start from scratch, I just want to show you the main idea of this method. We are inverting or reversing the normals to calculate a inside ambient occlusion, which is then being blurred and clustered, which gives you this or this kind of separation. And then we are going to fill the entire volume with points, identify the transition zones turn them into a volume to be subtracted from the main body. So you can see we get from the entire volume to this, uh, we get these gaps and then we just remesh it for a uh, polygon mesh again. And then we reapply the attributes we had before. All right, let's start in a new scene and the squab is the geometry we want to work with. I subdivided once to get a bit of a smoother surface and now we're already good to go for reversing the normals. So if you want a visual proof, now they are pointing outwards. We are switching them to points and then we re reverse them. So they should now point inwards. As soon as you click here, you should see the effect you're also losing the shading, which is to be expected. And now we are going to um, start creating a mask by feature. The feature we want is ambient occlusion. We can disable the directional mask and the shadows. There's little we need to change. It's just the sampling can be reduced to a ray distance of 0.25. And we should be aware that the occlusion is now written to an attribute called mask, which should also show up down here in the geometry spreadsheet. Now we can cluster these points right away by setting the cluster points node to a control attribute named mask. And if you disable the light, you would see now a bunch of clusters that correspond with the mesh thickness. Let's reduce the number of clusters to K3. And now you see in general, it does the job. We just have some outliers that need to be blurred away beforehand. So let's blur the mask 50 times to get rid of these patches we had there. Of course, the number of clusters can be changed, but in general, I would like to work with this. And just to show you the point, we could keep it at that and simply say we want to split off the different clusters by promoting the cluster attribute to primitives and then use the prim split again based on the cluster and to prove it, we will explode the entire mesh. You can play with the uniform scale and see it is being ripped into pieces. What you can also see is we have some in-between pieces, which is due to the promotion method, which can be switched to minimum or maximum. So it will decide for one side. Now what's more problematic is what you can see here. We have some openings that have quite complex shapes that cannot be filled easily. If you try with a polygonal fill, then you, even if you switch it to single polygon or quadrilateral grid, it sometimes look convincing, but it's also uh, intersecting with the next part, which may not be quite what you want. So, if this is not sufficient for your workflow, we will jump back to when we just had the cluster points and we will fill the entire mesh with points. There's a node called points from volume, 
which fills it with a grid of regular points or a regular grid with points. And we will make the separation a lot finer. We go down to 0 0.01 and transfer the point attributes from the clustered points to our point cloud. You can see the colors and also the cluster numbers have been transferred. And in order to blur the cluster numbers, we should cast them to a float. So at the moment, the clusters are integers and now using the attribute cast, they are float as you can see here. The reason we're doing this is because we would like to blur the clusters. I will first do it on the colors to see the effect. We would like to blur out the colors. Let's use maybe 20 iterations and you can see at the moment it's not doing it because the points are separated and the influence type is set to connectivity. As soon as you switch it to proximity, you see the colors are starting to blur, which is just what we want, but not on colors. Instead, we'll use the cluster. Now we would like to know how much this cluster has been blurred because in the center of the clusters, there will be nothing to blur because the neighbors do exactly the same. We can also dial down the radius and the number of neighbors we could set to 26 for all surrounding points. And now we want to see the difference between the original cluster number and its blurred version. So let's just say V at CD, which is good for seeing what we're doing. And we will want the absolute difference between F at op input, operator input one underscore cluster, minus the cluster on our geometry stream, which is F at cluster. Now you should see in white color the transition zones and the blurring would of course uh, define how much it fades out also play with the radius it makes more sense to use the point separation here and paste it as proximity radius for searching and we should give it a multiplier maybe the square root of 2 multiplied by the uh, point separate or particle separation now let's just keep the zones that are currently coded white so what or we would do, we would say if this is smaller than 0.02, we would like to remove the points i at pt num would then just leave us with the parts that were blurred. So let's dial this in a bit. And you can see this is what we want to use as a subtraction. So let's call this isolate gaps. And now we should be good to go in terms of converting this to a VDB from particles. Now this blows up quite a bit. So let's reduce the point radius scale to 0.01 and the voxel size to 0.005. If you turn on the light again, you see what we have created here. We can give it a bit more detail by going down to 0 0.0025. So you can see it builds spheres around the points, which then can be smoothed out using VDB Smooth. There are different options such as Gaussian, and we can also define the filter radius and the number of iterations. Um, I'm okay with what it's doing now. It's a bit thick, but we could still redefine the point density and the radii for the particles. So let's now try to subtract this from the voxel representation of the mesh. VDB from polygons is what we're going to use on a resolution of 0.01, filling it the entire interior. And now there is a VDB subtract node, which is just the VDB combine node set to subtraction. And now we will subtract the whole body from the gaps. 
So this is what we get. And to make it look um, a bit smoother, we will convert it back to polygons. And in order to get rid of the marching cubes topology, we also want to remesh it to a regular triangulated mesh with a target size of 0.02, which is the edge length. And if we wait a bit, we get this. If it looks a bit too crisp, you can also append a normal node set to a cusp angle of 180, but this is roughly what we expected. So let's uh, disable the wireframe for a second and inspect the gaps. And in, if we'd like to get the uh, attributes back, we would use the attribute transfer and refer back to the cluster points. And the only thing we want to exclude is the primitive information. And we use the roof sign hit spacebar and then capital N to remove the inverted normals. Thank you for watching.